Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. We had a really good response from you about the Christmas Western. We were a little bit surprised that, that we uh, posted here a couple weeks ago on our channel. And so I'd like to show you today about a 30 minute excerpt out of a four and a half hour online painting from our S106 Introduction to Western Painting Techniques, which is an online class and you can find it at jansenartonline.com. If you like this video, make sure you click like and drop us a comment. And if we get enough, we'll add some more Westerns to our lineup here on the channel. Okay, so I hope you enjoy it. And again, if you have any kinds of questions or anything like that about some of the things you see in the video, just drop us a comment. And you, as, as you know, I try to answer all of them. Okay, all right. Enjoy the video and I'll see you guys at the end. It's all painted acrylic and it's all painted optically. And uh, this, we don't need to blend. And so you'll see me making tones, half tones, and the way in which I use my brush, my brush calligraphy, is going to give me these uh, different looks. Okay, so, and I'm just going to poke in a bit of water and put that here onto my palette here. And uh, then I'm going to put out a little bit of the raw sienna. So let's grab some of that and put out just a bit of that here. And I'm just going to mix this up with some water here, kind of transparently like this. And it doesn't even have to be perfect because everything is going to cover up. But this just gives me a real warm glow here to my painting. So I want to grab this and grab a little more water and paint here. And just go right over the whole thing. I use as a toner and we'll use it for most of the horse. So I'm going to put quite a bit of it out there because I want to do a bay horse here. I'm going to set out a big old dollop of white. Let's start here with these colors. Okay. Now I also have, just in case I feel I need it, a bit of extender out here into a cap, but I'm not sure that I will really use it. Um, I might, but I don't know. It's It all depends on the paint. I like the paint to dry because I paint optically. So I like the paint to dry and I don't like it to stay wet for very long. So now I'm going to take down some white here. And we know about skies and we go all the way back to landscape class and some of the other things I say. The sky usually starts out, if you look at any of your sky, it starts out with a, you know, a darker color up at the top and then lighter colors. You go back if you're painting for a lot of depth. And the lighter color at the bottom is always always right around an eight or a nine because that is that's the atmospherics what we call the atmospherics of the color so i'm going to make a blue here because we're just going to bang this color right on there just like that and uh, let's get some of this up over here we might want just a touch more blue into here let's get down by his ear let's don't take out all of his ear there Let's get it just a modeled in between those colors. And this is what I learned from some of the other, uh, you know, uh, Western painters, is that they'll paint around stuff like this, and they'll paint around and drop that sky in, and maybe it'll be a little different here than it is right over there, so you get a little more violet in or something like that. And that looks great. Let's just drop in a little more blue here, a little water into that. You could use, like I say, you could use extender as well. Here, right out there. Who knows what those are going to be. They're going to be mountains back there. But, um, you know, how much? We don't know yet. I'm going to take a, just a bit of a darker color here. And uh, just suggest left side is the light side. Right side is the shadow side there. So we'll just suggest and break some of those edges and stuff here and create some little lines, little movements moving to the right that will have shadow here. Just big brush, move that, just give some suggestions of that here. Stay casual because we want to paint this really casual. And a real optical violety yellow here that goes way back that I'm just going to add a little water. But you notice how wet this stays here, okay? And, uh, you know, it, it stays pretty wet. So we want to come back here. And I want to drop this in mostly to that, establish a nice horizontal here into my painting. 
And I was, I was watching this one artist, beautiful Australian artist, and he says, every painting needs a strong horizontal and a strong vertical. And of course, that's not always true, but you know, it, it, in his technique, yeah, that's very much true. Let's get that just a bit lighter because it will dry just a bit darker. Let's establish, this is establishing the back plane back here. Blur that into your mountains a bit. Here, let's just establish that back through. We'll come right around our cow there. Let's leave that a little bit there so I don't have to sketch it too much more. It'll start to develop more and more and more interest up into here. Darks. We'll have a dark shadows from that horse and stuff that we want to be able to get in there. You know, but we'll have some dark colors that we're going to want to push into our bushes up into here. Might as well put in a little bit now. Because we're going to be doing a lot later. We'll get some of this yellow back in there. Push that around. Get that. Try not to do it in strokes. Try to do this. Make it's not a mess. Okay, it's <laughs> it's movement. We're just we're painting movement and stuff in there. Lots of color, lots of movement. And we'll get some more yellows back on there. Now look how those yellows pop off just a bit more. And I'm gonna build and build and build paint till my paint is really, really thick up here. Really thick. And that's one of the things I'm doing right now, too, is just doing it over and over and over again. Building and building and building my paints that I need to have up in here. Just a touch, we'll put in that tone right in there. And the tones are pretty close here. You don't even have to worry about making a half tone. They're pretty close. And so watch the, the direction. Now this leg is going to curve around here just a bit. Pull The muscle's going to pull in this way. And then there will be that knobby little knee there. But, um, you know, watch that. Watch the, the directions of it here because the tones are fairly close. You don't need to put in half tones or anything like that yet. So they're fairly close. But we just get this light side here. If you just get this light side and then a little darker on the other side, you're in good shape to start out the painting here. And let's just drag a bit of that right here onto this chest muscle. Just set that. I usually like to get the horse in and then come back and stroke the light again and again. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Get in a nice light. See, and you can catch a little bit of that light if you need to right up in here. That come. It might come in there. We might leave that, might take it out. Uh, we might hit that light right up here. On this side, here, there, and uh, then we'll work some of that burnt sienna and stuff right down into that. Um, I'm going to give him a, a bit of a, a bit of a blaze there, so I'm just going to pull down just lightly here, like that. Just push that color in there just lightly. I want to have a bit of a blaze. I mean, my bay, she had beautiful light blaze and I do like that on the horse. I do like this one reference foot over here. This one has a light stocking so we might give a stocking, light stocking to that one. But try not to, when you're putting the blaze on, try not just to pull a line down and get any texture in it because you want to give some some differences here to the blaze. So we'll just pull some color across there like that and maybe hit that one's really beautiful in that it disappears up there as it's going between the the eyes a bit so we might do that on this one let that just soften out there in the dark right out here along this leg that'll be great let's put a little and see this is what I talk about more about optically blending I'm going to put a strike of burnt sienna here just kind of following the contour of his leg there and uh, maybe down this side here a bit following the contour of his leg, and then he gets that nice light, maybe even a bit of white, yellow burnt sienna, bit of white here. And we can even make a brighter orange, which I'll put my other red out, make a brighter orange, which will look great on this horse also. Um, to pop that in. And uh, 
then you go back and you check it optically and you go, hey, that's that's not so bad. That's it's not so bad. It uh, it is blending out. You know, at six feet, that's blending out. And I'm not using anything other than the values, making sure my values are not too far apart. So if I want to pop this one up here, we want to stroke this cheek like that. So we get that power of that plane that's on the big flat part of their cheek. And um, I could actually have a little bit of roundness to that bottom side. So I'll put that in, but we'll pull that down. Let's take a little burnt sienna yellow here and just pull up a bit here. Oh, a little bit. Just pull up a bit here. Push that in and pull that up a bit just to get a touch of that roundness to that cheek there. Like that. Let me see you step back from there. Look, hey, that's not too bad. Let's put that burnt sienna right up here. Soften that into that as it's going into that shadow there. You know, find, stroking the planes, stroking with the planes here. So the plane of the shirt here, plane of his shirt pulling down here like that, reaching that in. And uh, the plane of his arm here now pulling across a bit here and it'll form a few uh, fabric shadows, wrinkles, in other words, there. We'll set some of that in and uh, let's get a bit of that shadow color happening right in there. But I'm going to need to go to a smaller brush to really get some of this precise in here. I've got a bit of a sleeve right there, a little bit of a lighter gray here on this side. We'll put his arm back on top of that and that he's in there stroking his dog, petting his dog. We'll grab some of that light blue. There. And we'll put a darker purpley blue shadow in there again we state some of that right in here the edge of his sleeve there and um, we'll take a burnt sienna and white just for right now I call it a quick flesh color let's you know we've got to warm and cool and do all that kind of stuff but let's just drop in that quick uh, flesh color here. Added just a touch of yellow. Wish I didn't do that. I need to, to make that really good, nice warm flesh. We need the, the naphthol red light out. And we don't need to put that out yet. Hi everyone, welcome back. Now what we're gonna do is I let that dry really well. Had myself a sandwich, a cup of coffee, feel pretty good about it. Played with the dog. <laughs> so now what we're gonna do is uh, go in and let's work the sky. Let's put some of those nice clouds in. Not exactly as we will into the end, but let's do that a little bit more. Then we'll come down and refine down into the front. Okay, so so I wanna I wanna work on that. And I, I think it's something you should work on too. We don't play with it, we, we power it on. I'll put a little bit of blue into that. Let's walk that up into the uh, into the uh, sky a little higher. We'll reset some of those purple mountain majesty there. I'll probably want to put some uh, put some uh, yellows and stuff in there too, so they're not it's not quite as purple to that yellow there. But uh, it's it's a process, you know. It's a process when you're painting like this. You're looking at it and painting it. And let's go a little bit more blue. Let's add just a touch of extender. This will just keep it wet for a little bit. Let's get a bit of that. And I had a little bit of violet into that here. So let's push a little bit of that violet up into there. Maybe put a another little powerful part of it pushing up right over here by the horse, and that will command some interest right by the horse here. Of course, we'll have to push the horse right back up into there. But, uh, 
that'll put some more commanding interest into the horse and and we get a little smaller dragging it back here dragging it back down and back and maybe a bit along the horizon line there something like that very soft along the horizon line Careful cloud a little more light get rid of that grungy there a little bit there we go and a little bit more casual out here and uh, just push around a bit you know that's nature doesn't make them like big white puffy things push around a bit move them around yeah, and that's I like that just that casual movement into the sky you know push them around they, the sky pushes them up you know and pulls them back the wind pulls them back we have that nice shadow on the bottom of them there here let's just purple that out just a bit just break it up a bit now let's go lighter so we get back up here to the front just drag some of that across there try to be kind of powerful with it try to establish that horizontal that I mentioned there before you get any of those kinds of horizontals I'm doing this um, painting the seascape class and we're using a lot of strong and we're doing quick seascapes these are you know about an hour or so painting maybe a little bit longer but uh, seascapes and we're using strong verticals and horizontals basically into the painting following what uh, some of the, the the feeling is on those of, of landscape painters to get the strong horizontals and verticals in there and uh, it really does work I've totally enjoyed the first bits that we have filmed on it the first paintings and uh, and uh, let's just get that light now see this is starting to dry down just a bit I got it in a few other areas and I'm liking it and let's get that nice plane here up on his cheek Here, just brush that over the edge there just a bit puts a touch of that light on there and see now I look I step back and I look and it's like okay I could have right in there I right in here I could have another little touch of that light hitting right there that looks pretty good let's get a little burnt sienna right on the edge of that tap that in and just reduce that edge there just a bit maybe not that other one just leave it like that and that looks pretty good and uh, one this uh, overlaps I've always wanted to to build a saddle I have several saddles I have my even my grandfather's hunting saddle and uh, I've always wanted to build a saddle though I built reins and, and uh, bridles and all that kind of stuff but I haven't built a saddle I always thought it'd be fun to build a saddle so I'll put that uh, marks down there um, we could use some dark as just to help break up we'll get our violet and that green and some of this just to help separate and put a little idea of shadowing in between some of these flaps of the saddle here just pushing it back you try to get some of the the, the basic shapes of it correct and everything and then we can uh, you know we can dress it all up as as, as uh, detailed as we want Let's loose this gray this is beautiful grays over here a little bit more blue here a little burnt sienna and blue are perfect grays for this dog really 
um, but you can get the dark ones in there too because it's just carrying over some of the colors of the horse but um, I'm just going to use my small this is my number four flat here and uh, let's set in a little bit of gray so it's basically tone painting I'm tone but I'm going to keep my my stripes because he's a Australian cattle dog and and um, his colors will be more distinct here and uh, so you want to keep these strikes fairly quick and and don't lose the color separation too much between them here there like that so that and uh, we put that little tiny indication of a nose on there yesterday or excuse me yesterday this morning and we'll take some of it out just a bit just put it in and take it out and I want to keep up a, a nice light though right there by the top of his head and, and a little more so hit right in here just because that helps him advance maybe a little touch right on the tip of his nose there helps him advance you see it a little different here and now we'll soften through that just a corner of your brush move through that a bit there A little bit of gray for his rest of his nose kind of there just a quick little strike strike of it don't try to get it there just a quick little strike it's very suggestive here <clears throat> Let's move some of that down spot some of that up bit coming out this way take a few out but it's, this is kind of like some of the techniques that I use on birds and it works and you can get a little more definitive you know pull back up the other way to soften some of that but I like that uh, I want to get some dark dark in there burnt sienna into some of that blue and violet and green and a little burnt sienna let's get some dark dark back up in here dark markings there I just like that bit of a hunch here in his back so I want to get rid of that here let's get that violet and into some of this dark makes a nice dark color here first we'll go medium tone here put some of that in we need to get a, a touch darker with that deep shadow there by the shirt by there and uh, A little bit here coming up the side of his sleeve there a lot and see it kind of pulls the pulls the painting together we're gonna to do the same thing you're gonna see me do it in the, in the other paintings uh, in in the other ones too I'm gonna to come through and there's certain Western artists and stuff that do this I like it I really do putting some of the blue strokes in that just you know light and carry and tie some of that together I love that stuff just and some of them are real brave with it I'm not that brave yet with it but look what the blue puts that little spark in the painting here and I like that let's lighten this a little warmth that up just a bit I gotta fix this hand and fix that uh, that area a touch but uh, 
we'll do that. I'm going to pull this. Uh, got a little bit of a squeaky chair this afternoon. I'm going to fix a little bit of light right in here. There. That looks pretty good. And uh, we can take a little burnt sienna and a tiny bit of red, violet, and blue. That's your cool shadow tone. You'll see me use that on the, the other paintings, the other westerns. But that's just a nice, cool, shadowy tone. And we'll drop some of that in here down the neck. A little bit on her ears coming out there. This one's walking back away. So I just drag it around onto the uh, shadow side here. Burnt siennas and blues. And I have my little cow photos there to kind of look at. Be kind of suggestive. This is just my little number four. So I'm just being... And we could even on the forward one here put a, another tone in. Uh, you know, as you get back here, you want it softer, lighter, more transparent, just little hits of it just to say that, you know, there's some shadows hitting some places, but these are unknowns, right? You're not giving those any kind of shape, so you're giving a little bit of shadow there. Let's take a little burnt sienna, a nice warm color. Nice warm. Let's put on some of that warmth on this big one, right in, but right next to that shadow, so it warms it up a bit. Playing there, look a little darker, and that's all. It's not too bad. If it gets it, you know, you'd have to, you know, really, you should get lighter at the back. So, if it starts to get too much, you just increase the dark up into the front and bring the viewer back up here. Like you can take some uh, dark. You'll see this in, um, you know, we'll talk about this with. Uh, you know, um, um, over the top, that one there, the single one, he's on top of the, the ridge line, you know, made it up to the top of a mountain. If you paint this again right in here and get some of those darks back up in here, get those violets up in here, a little bit of violet blues, darks, those just help a lot. And don't be afraid to just do that. See how that pops that forward, right? And you got to have that and you look and you know you look in between prairie grass and stuff and they'll be there because that's the dirt and the ground and stuff you know i go out onto the prairies and i just look and look and look and then you start painting taking some of it out but this is where your depth is in your painting is going to come from so again let's just bring that out again And I took out a little too much of that oval there, so just back painted out, negative painted in. There. Touch a little dark right into there. Just like that. So it's very, very impressionistic. So we just have to give a, a little bit. And one thing I was talking with Jessica at lunch today with uh, when we took a break into the filming of it, and you know, we were discussing the, the overall story here. And I said, you know, right now, you know, when we were painting it, I mean, where I was, the horse was not completely connected to the rider. And I told her, I said, when I put the reins in, that's my feeling, and I put the reins in, that will connect the horse into this part of the painting here so and I think it's kind of doing that so that's what I wanted so just tap a little bit more highlight a little bit more this gray there a little bit more light some of these things and you 
you know, that's just some of the stuff that I look for that I like. And uh, so I got to be careful not to get it too close to that dog. I want to pull your eye in that way. And you can do it through light. You can do it through dark. You know, um, put in some different color, just strokes. Just go in and just attack it here. You got some paint on your palette. Use some of it up here. And build and build and build and build and build. And that just looks wonderful. There we go. And get some of those. Make sure you preserve some of those horizontals. Those are so important there, there to, especially to your linear perspective in your painting. Okay, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I might I might put in a little highlight on or something like that. Or um, you know I, I don't know. I think I'm if I play around with it too much, if I put it away for today and then come back tomorrow and to say and give myself the freedom, I'll play with it and then it'll end up flat. So I don't want to do that either. It's nice just to paint a painting like this, to get it done, and keep it very much it's it's a la prima and uh, then see what happens. But you know, Martha will look at this and go, well, why don't you change this just a little bit? And I'll go do that because this Martha loves my westerns and she's been around horses. Well, just a few more years than I have been and uh, knows them very very well and stuff and so, so she'll say well maybe the chest is a little wide or something like that but uh, <laughs> you know it's great to have all that in that other little uh, inspiration so you might want to take some of this blue like I did drag it around in a few places you could even touch but these guys back here don't get locked up into trying to get anything just let it be the impression of them and that's all they need um, you know little strokes of the blue like the the little strokes of the blue though I mean look really great like on the dog like on the side here boy that does look good we get at that blue and but that the blue now that's this is very popular in a lot of Western painters they'll drag that sky color just right into their painting and usually the value you make it a value of the object that's in here like here onto the horse you know putting that little bit into that just drops that in but a little bit of that into the dog right there it just keeps that see how it just puts that little spark I want to run some where we start to look at some of the old ones like Lem Remington and then we look at some more you know Jason Rich we look at some current modern painters and some of their different types of techniques and they all got these techniques and they're just absolutely wonderful but you get a pretty good look painting uh, optically painting uh, this optically with um, with just acrylic okay all right thanks a lot for joining me and uh, as always like everything hit that little contact button if you have a question if it's something I think the whole class will benefit from I'll film it and put it into the classroom uh, otherwise I'll, I'll answer it through the email for you okay all right I'll see you later